What is going on, fellow members of the Juke Squad? Since the outside of my house is still a toxic wasteland, all the videos that I want to film, I kind of can't. So I have a video that I think is going to be very interesting that you guys are really going to enjoy. Throughout history, we've seen some incredible events unfold when it comes to sports athletes. From the Olympics to the X Games, basketball, baseball, and golf alike, some of the greatest and most memorable moments in sports history came from either injured or sick players. Why is it that while sick or injured, some of these players gave their top performances ever? From Michael Jordan's flu game, to the Tiger Woods injured game, Tifu's flu game, Danny Way nearly breaking his leg and still dropping in. We're going to go over some of the craziest moments in sports history regarding sick or injured players and explain why they perform so well while under the weather. I feel as though it's a good topic for me to cover because I've seen this from the inside. I'm a professional skimboarder and during a competition out in California, I actually competed while sick with pneumonia. But we'll get into that later in the video. To kick things off, Kurt Schilling won game six of the 2004 ALCS on a bloody ankle. Before the game, he had a crude surgery where the tendon in his ankle was sutured to his ankle tissue. The picture shows a severely bloody ankle during the game and he still went on to win. In 1976, Shun Fujimoto helped the Japan team win the gymnastics gold medal at the 1976 Olympics after breaking his kneecap. He competed on the rings with his injury and he ended up dislocating it when he landed. With his twisting triple somersault landing, he dis dislocated his knee and tore ligaments, but he managed to keep his balance, earning the best ring score of his life. I did not think of failing on the rings. The pain was unexplainable. I wasn't thinking, what have I done? I couldn't think that much. Unable to continue, Shun was forced to withdraw from the competition with three rounds to go. Tiger Woods, arguably one of the best golf players on the planet, won the 2008 US Open on a broken leg and a torn ACL. He had to fight through 91 holes in total after it went to a playoff. Expect anything different? Harry Strong helped the U.S. gymnastics team win gold in 1996 with an amazing vault right after spraining her ankle. Harry Strong is hurt. She is hurt badly. Manchester City goalie Bert Trotman finished the 1956 FA Cup with a broken neck. I mean, I just had pneumonia. I can't even imagine being a goalie with a broken neck. That's beyond me. And of course, one of the most famous injury slash sick games ever played was played by Michael Jordan. The famous flu game. Michael Jordan scored 38 points with the flu in game five of the 1997 finals. Michael Jordan decided that he was going to play anyway despite the fact that he was up all night and sick the night before the game. He was throwing up, coughing, had a fever, shortness of breath, but he played anyway and he played well. He went on to score 38 points on his own, and his team went on to win that game. It's one of the most iconic games in sports history, and to this day, the flu game shoes are some of the most sought after designs of all time. The shoes worn in that game went on to sell for over $100,000. During the post-game interview, Michael said this. It's all about desire, you just gotta come out here and do what you gotta do. You wanted it real bad, you know, and, and me as a leader, I had to come out and do my best, and hopefully the team could rally around me and come out and make contributions. Never any really doubt along the stretch. How, I mean, how weak were you? I was really tired. I was very weak. At halftime, I told uh, Phil that used me in you know, spurts. But, I mean, somehow I found the energy to stay strong. I wanted it really bad. All right, congratulations on a great game, Michael. Get some rest. Thanks. Just goes to show if you're dedicated and you want something bad enough, you can overcome anything. And now possibly one of the craziest injuries of all time. Rams player Jack Youngblood went on to break his leg during the second quarter of the 1997 playoff game. He stayed in the game, played two more playoff games, and even appeared in the Pro Bowl. Couldn't bend my fingers, couldn't put my, couldn't put my watch on things like that, there were indications that something might not be quite right. So I, so I go in, the trainer looks at it, he almost faints. So at that, I'm saying to myself, something is bad wrong here. He jumps on the phone, they call the doctors, one thing leads to another. I'm in the hospital that evening. And when he was in the emergency room, the doctors ended up removing a blood clot the size of a hot dog. This next story to me is one of the most iconic stories that I've ever seen. Um, it could partially be because I watched it happen live, but since then I've probably watched it at least a hundred times. Every time I watch this story, I get the chills and I am 
inspired beyond belief because what this guy did is just next level. And that is Danny Way during the X Games. During his second run of five, during the big air finals, Danny Way went up for an air, landed his first trick over the mega ramp, went up to the vert ramp, and clipped his ankles, sending him head over heels straight flat to his back. It is one of the worst injuries that I have ever seen. An injury that would put most people down for the count. He laid down for almost 10 minutes before returning to his feet and heading straight back up to the top of the ramp. I was really impressed with Jake last year walking off the ramp. I thought, I gotta do the same thing. I can't get carried out of here. That's just not the way it's gonna go down. They tried to provide him with a wheelchair because he was limping so bad, but he refused and went up to the top of the ramp anyway. Might I add, with a limp. He's seen jumping around at the top of the ramp and drop back in. Lands his first trick, sticks the 540 on the vert ramp. What? But he wasn't done there. That wasn't the trick that he had in mind to win the competition. So again, after one of the most horrifying slams that I have ever seen, he goes back up to the top for another run. Remember Danny Way coming back in again after that full pull. Whoa! Indy nosebone backflip. Big twist, burial. Oh my gosh! Oh, and good. slams this again. This is an emotional roller coaster. I would have, I would have been dead. That would have been it for me. Nope. After that brutal slam that probably would have broken my neck, he still made his way to the top of the ramp. He claimed before the event that he was going to do every single run. I want to, when is my run? I gotta get back. You need to go to the top? Where's my run? Where are they at? Can you take this? Where's going? Where are they at? Oh, so keep down the contest? I missed a run? No way. And he limped back up to the top for one final run, and history was made that day. This clip again gives me chills every time, and in my opinion, is one of the most iconic runs in action sports history. Let's watch it. Unbelievable to see. Come on, Danny. Make this one safe. Oh, no. He's got it. What are you? I was holding my breath on that. Oh, my God. There is no kids in Danny Way. You can't make this stuff up. I watched this happen live, and it is just mind blowing to say the least. Honestly, the dedication he showed throughout that is hands down one of the most incredible, inspiring things I've ever seen in my life. And this story never ceases to amaze or inspire me. If you want something bad enough, nothing can stop you. Danny Way is living proof that you can overcome anything if you are dedicated enough. Then that brings us to the boy Tifu. While this isn't a physical sports story, I think it deserves some recognition. Whether you love or hate Fortnite, it is a very complex game. The only way I can describe it to someone who has never played before is it's basically like a really fast paced game of chess. You have to execute moves extremely quickly to get the upper hand on your opponent. The following footage is Turner during a tournament versus 99 other pro players fighting to be the last man standing. The amount of moves that these guys execute in a single second is mind blowing and for me it's hard to grasp, but they somehow seem to execute these plays with perfection and precision. During the last tournament that went down, Turner had the flu and actually ended up throwing up in the middle of two games. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but if I'm sick, I'm laying in bed and I do not want to do anything. But I do see how all these athletes use these sicknesses and these injuries to their advantage. I myself entered a skimboarding competition while I had pneumonia. Pneumonia basically just makes you slow, it's extremely hard to breathe, and entering a skim competition with pneumonia is probably not the best idea, but the craziest part about that is during the competition, while I was competing, I felt better than I did since I had gotten sick. And uh, that's the reason that I'm making this video, because since that happened, I totally understood all of their perspectives. 
and how they played so well while they were sick or injured. While I was sick and was barely able to comfortably walk, the adrenaline boost and the support that I got from everyone pushed me harder than I ever imagined to give it my all. I felt amazing in those moments, full of energy, full of motivation to still go out and give it my all, and I actually performed very well. And when you're sick like that or injured, you look at competing from a completely different perspective. And sometimes when you see something from an alternate perspective, and even a conservative perspective, it can be used to your advantage. Turner was sick and throwing up, coughing uncontrollably, but he fought it out and he played anyway. In my mind, he obviously played the game slightly different than he would have if he wasn't sick. And while we'll never know if he would have won while feeling 100%, I think it's safe to say that the fact that he wasn't feeling well overall didn't hurt him. Because during the only two games that he threw up while gliding in, he went on to be the last man standing and to win those matches. And he won with style and it seemed with ease. Here's some footage. <coughs> When did I feel amazing? It's not how this works, dog. I'm, try I'm trying to win, bro, but... Oh. What? What the fuck do you mean you're alive? I don't mind. I'll take all the loot up. I'll take it all. Dude, I gotta take a piss, dude. worth it. Could at least get like second or third place. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Let's go, baby. Oh, shit. Yo. Yeah, here we are. I'm telling you, the homies are happy as hell. Look at that. The homies are happy. And let me tell you, let me tell you something. This kid got banned. He got hacked. He got death threats. He's been everything. We just like to thank all the fans out there. Get the hell all out the of here, fans. Mike. You're gonna get sick. All the fans sick. like to thank Twitch. Hats off to all of these athletes that played and persevered through sickness and injuries. They're some of the most inspiring stories I've ever seen from athletes. No matter how you feel, if you're down, if life's throwing you curveballs, as long as you're doing your best and you know that you're giving it your all, who knows, you could come out on top. Nobody ever became the best at anything without facing failure, for the most part, over and over again. When you lose at something, it's only a true loss if you didn't learn from that loss. Be humble when you win, but especially be humble when you lose and learn from it. This is what makes you a champion, and this is what will make you great and will make you remembered. Thanks to everyone out there for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you are new. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. That's all I ask. And uh, be sure to turn those notifications on so that YouTube doesn't bury my channel and I cease to exist. <laughs> please. But uh, other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow, possibly the next day with a new video. Hats off to all these amazing athletes. Their stories are nothing short of inspiring. Peace. I'm gonna go